Hi everyone, this is the help video for the 7.02 quiz, uh, choosing the best type of graph. So in this lesson, um, we are asked to choose the most appropriate graph based on our data. Um, so when we're given a real world numerical or categorical data set, we're going to choose and create the appropriate graphical representation. So it's important in this lesson that we understand the different types of graphical representation options for us. And then based on um, the data that we've been presented, that we choose uh, the best type of graph. So here is our quiz that this help video is for. There is a direct link to this quiz in your grade book. Um, after this video is recorded, you will also see the help video posted here as well as the notes. Um, so please make sure you're using all of those resources uh, when you take this quiz. Uh, for this quiz, it is not necessary to use a calculator, but as you guys know, you can use a calculator on any quiz. However, this one, it is not necessary because this is all about observation. So we're not really doing a lot mathematically here. Um, we are just going to be looking at... Oops. Um, we're just going to be looking at different data sets, um, different scenarios, and then we're going to be choosing which graph is best. So here's a, a sample question. Uh, similar to what we went over in class, which is the best type of graph to show the number of lined books and the number of unlined books sold at four different stores? So the first thing that really stands out to me here is the fact that they're talking about two different types of notebooks, lined and unlined. And then they're also saying it was sold at four different stores. So the more data points that pop up, um, that would require uh, a, a graph that can show multiple types of data comparing the two. So in this scenario, we're comparing line notebooks and online notebooks. Um, so the best graphical representation for that would be a double bar graph because we are comparing those two sets of data uh, among the four different stores. Here's another scenario. Which type of graph would you choose to show the length of four different books? Um, so in this scenario, we would just want to choose a classic bar graph. Um, the bar graph is kind of one that we use when the scenario doesn't fit with anything else. Um, so we will at the end review all the different types of graphs and when it's most appropriate to use them. Um, but the bar graph is always the safest bet. Um, it's the option that we would pick when it does not fit into any of the other uh, given graphs. Which is the best type of graph to show the proportion of students born in spring, summer, fall, or winter? So we look for keywords as always in this uh, scenario. The keyword here is proportion. Anytime we see something like proportion or percentage or out of 100, um, all of those things indicate to us that we are dealing with circle graphs. Um, just like we talked about in 7.01, Circle graphs is a proportional relationship um, out of 100. So anytime we see proportion or percentage, we are going to choose circle graph as our most appropriate data representation. And finally, which type of graph would show the number of cars in a parking lot each hour today? Um, again, we are looking for those keywords. This one says each hour today. Uh, anytime that we're dealing with time, that's going to be a line graph. So changes over time is best represented by a line graph. Um, so that would be the best graphical representation in this scenario. So let's do a summary. Um, obviously, we didn't talk about each of these, but you have been exposed to all of these. So we're going to talk a little bit about each one one more time and just kind of pull out some of the, the key information with all of them. The first one is the bar chart. Um, the bar chart, like we said before, is a safe choice. So it's best for small-ish sets of data. Um, you can also use a double bar graph. If there's additional data sets. Um, it's the most classic type of data uh, visual representation. Uh, however, you know, it's kind of the one that we would use if it doesn't fit in anywhere else. So it's kind of our default um, if there's not a better option. 
The next one would be histogram. So we would use histogram for very large sets of data um, because histograms show the data in ranges. So it's not as specific as a bar graph. Um, a histogram is the one where all of the bars are touching, whereas the bar graphs are all separate from each other. Uh, so with a histogram, you're dealing with non-specific data. Um, so you're not exactly sure what all your data points maybe are, but you just know which category they fit into. So again, great for very large sets of data. Um, so if we're dealing with something that's a massive data set, we would want to choose histogram so we could show which ranges each number falls into. Next, we have a line chart, which is different dots connected by a line. And this is great for comparing something over a time period. We often see line charts used when we're measuring uh, maybe rainfall or snowfall in a specific area over a specific time. Um, sometimes we compare heights using a line chart, you know, like the height of a child over their lifespan. Um, so anything that happens over a specific time period, it could be a short time period or a long time period, but the line chart is the best way to show um, the movement either up or down uh, over a specific time. Then we have a pie chart or a circle graph. Both terms are appropriate. Um, a pie chart or a circle graph is in a circle and it has different sectors. Each sector represents a different category. Now the key with circle graphs and pie charts is it's a proportional relationship out of 100%. So we're looking for keywords. Anytime we wanna use a circle graph, we wanna look for keywords like proportion, 100%, um, percentage. All of these are keywords that would indicate to us that a circle graph would be the best um, graphical representation. Next, we have a stem and leaf plot. Stem and leaf plot is based on the place value. Um, so the tens value would be the stem, the ones value would be the different leaves. That is not good for very large sets of data. Um, it's good for very concise data, numbers that are kind of similar to each other. Um, and it's not good for data that's widespread or very large. So we don't use stem and leaf plots super often. Um, but it's important that we know how to use them. And finally, I'll move my little camera out of the way, box plots. So box plots is the final type of graphical representation that we talked about in this lesson. Um, a box plot is great for visually being able to see the maximum, the minimum and the median. You can easily see the distribution. Um, you can see outliers, which is something we're gonna talk about in next week's lesson a little bit more. Um, but again, a box plot, the best way to use it is if it's important that you know the, the beginning of your data, so the minimum, the ending of your data, so the maximum, and where all the data falls in between, um, so the median. So that is all that I have for you for this video. Um, I hope that reviewing all the different graph types and how to use them will help you on your quiz. As always, you have one attempt for now and an additional attempt will be open after small group. Thank you so much for watching.